Good morning. This is Keith Oglesby with Christ Episcopal Church. Thank you for joining me today for our morning prayer as we pray together virtually. Today is Friday, January 22nd, in the week of the second Sunday in the season after Epiphany. Thank you for joining uh, again. Thank you for joining today. Just to give you some of the things that we'll be covering in our regular morning prayers, we will be reading together Psalm 31. Psalm 30, 31 can be found uh, beginning on page 622 of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll also be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. So again, I hope you'll be able to uh, read along. As we say every week, if you have a Book of Common Prayer, we'll begin on page 79 with a confession of sin. Uh, you can do that as well with BCP Online or try some of the apps that are available like Venite. So those are all ways to do this, or like I say, most every week, just listen and respond to those prayers that you know. So let's have a moment of silence, and then we can begin. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Again, using the form on page 79. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. In this time of great change in our nation and yet continuity, uh, confession of sin is important to remember not just for our individual uh, sins, but for the sins of our nation. So be mindful of our history, and be mindful of what we need to do today to work for justice and to have our repentance be uh, not only for our forgiveness, but for our inspiration. Now continuing on page 80, Lord, open our lips, our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And then in this season, uh, well, for any time, we're actually beyond where we have the normal antiphon for this season of, of Epiphany. So at the bottom of page 81 is a sentence we'll repeat with before and after the Benite. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for rock to the, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Now moving to our psalm for today. Again, it's Psalm 31 which we can find beginning on page 622 of the Book of Common Prayer. And as always, if you're kind of scrambling to get to a page, always remember to pause. Uh, you can pause the video and get in your right place, get settled, and then start again. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. 
For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols, and I put my trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy, for you have seen my affliction, you know my distress. You have not shut me up in the power of the enemy. You have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Lord, let me not be ashamed for having called upon you. Rather, let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lip like let the lying lips be silenced, which speak against the righteous, haughtily and disdainfully and with contempt. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have done in the sight of all, for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the covert of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his love in a besieged city. Yet I said in my alarm, I've been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the sound of my entreaty when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you who worship him. The Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full those who act haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now a reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, he woke up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased. There was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here ends the reading. And during this season, we have the, uh, it's the blessing of having three different ways of reading through Mark. One is our Sunday lectionary. We also have some readings from John included, but Mark will be our main focus. And those of you who are doing the Good Book Club, that's also going through the Gospel of Mark. We have a Bible study on Monday via Zoom that I'm leading. So that's another uh, dip into that great gospel. And then, of course, our daily office lectionary. So they're all in different places in the gospel, so you can keep up uh, with each. 
and hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I hope you're taking advantage of that. Now, continuing on page 93 of the Book of Common Prayer with Canticle 18 is our uh, response to what we just read. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we continue to the prayers on page 97. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Now, our colic from this prior Sunday, which we continue to pray the week following, for the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known and worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Our colic for Fridays in morning prayer. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, an extra collect, one for guidance for us as individuals, as families, as this parish a community and the wider community and for our nation. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, that's a collect I've prayed often in different seasons of my life, and in this time, I think it's an important collect for us to pray together. And now our prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, 
may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Now, if you would like, again, pause the, the video, pray as long as you want for your personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. And after some moments of silence, I'll pray intercessions for all of us as uh, we transition to the general thanksgiving. Pray, of course, the, the things that have been on our hearts over the last uh, several months for those with COVID as we have crossed that uh, threshold of 400,000 people who've died from this awful disease. We pray for the rollout of the vaccine, of people being vaccinated, to be kept safe, and for our behaviors to continue to do those things that help to keep us all safe. So wearing masks and keeping distance and keeping our hands clean. Pray that we stay faithful, even though it's been a long time and been frustrating. Pray for those impacted uh, economically from the disease and how some have lost jobs or businesses have been, been impacted. So let us pray for one another as we go through these hard times, both in terms of our health and in terms of our work and financial lives. Pray for families under uh, duress, uh, that this uh, pandemic has made some family situations even more toxic and if that is your situation, I pray for you. And if you need help, feel free to reach out to the church. And I know that God loves you and wants what is good for you and protection for you. And we do pray for our government. It seems in some ways so far away uh, with people so far above us. But we do pray for our new president, for those members of his administration uh, in these weeks ahead as they make important decisions. We pray for Congress, that our system of government that was under some threat uh, his health. And we pray that we continue to work together, liberal and conservative, moderate, uh, secular and religious, all the different elements of our human family here in the United States, that we may work for the common good, which God calls us to do. And now we pray uh, in thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And I pray you have a good Friday, a good beginning to your weekend. As we continue this time of, of great challenge, may you also realize the great grace that is available to all of us through Jesus Christ.